Hello there, and welcome to Unit 9 for AP Psych. This unit is on social psychology, which is on group behavior and human interaction. This unit is maybe one of psychology's most fun and favorite topics. Many researchers, uh, many researchers have uh, the famous studies of social psychology, such as Zimbardo, Milgram, Ash, and more. You'll be learning all about those within this unit as we break down social psych into about four lessons. Let's go ahead and get started. First lesson of social psychology is on the attribution process, which basically means how do we explain human behavior? When something happens, as uh, if you're witnessing it, or if it's you yourself involved, or your own behavior, or someone else's behavior, we make explanations for why those things occurred. These explanations are called attributions. There are two famous forms of the attribution process, one of which is called the internal attribution and one which is the external attribution. As you try to break these down, you should consider the research of Fritz Heider on locating human behavior. We have human behavior within a person and outside a person, which basically means is it a personal, uh, personality trait or personal factor or is it outside a person, meaning you're blaming the situation or environment. So an internal attribution, if you make one, means that when you witness a behavior or when it's a behavior that you're doing or the cause of an event, you are blaming the cause of those things on personal dispositions, traits, abilities, or feelings. Simply put, you're putting the onus on the personality. If you were to make an external attribution, what you're saying is for the same kinds of things, uh, such as a situational demand or environmental constraint rather than a personality trait. It would be like saying if you rob a bank and in process of robbing a bank you're not the robber but you're a witness you see someone there robbing a bank and you instantly decide that person is just a terrible cruel person who doesn't care about any laws or anything in the world rather than thinking there is some kind of external attribution that's impacting their behavior the cause of their behavior even that would be making an internal attribution, saying, eh, they're a bad person. That's why they're robbing the bank. Now, there have been other social psychologists and researchers who have tried to cut across the internal, external dimension. Probably one of the more famous ones is a guy known as Bernard Viner. Bernard Viner makes attributions for success and failure, saying that instead people should focus on the stability of the causes of the underlying behavior rather than just saying, internal or external dimension. Stability of behavior or stability of situation is broken down into an unstable cause and a stable cause. What that means is that some things are temporary while others are permanent. So for example, let's look at a personality trait disposition or um, something within a person that could be considered temporary or likely to change. Well, that would be your effort, mood, or fatigue. These are all things that are cutting across the internal unstable dimension as we look for something that is within a person, but something that could also change. When you compare that with something that is within a person, internal, cause, that is both stable and or permanent, then we find that ability or intelligence tend to appear. Ability or intelligence should be rather fixed or permanent and should not change. Therefore, it is within a person, but permanent. When you look for things that are outside of a person, such as an environmental factor or situational factor that can change or that are temporary, well, we find that luck, chance, and opportunity are all on the unstable cause of the stability dimension. Your luck is something that can change. Your chance or opportunities are also things that can change. But when you look across the external dimension and the stability dimension and find something permanent, such as task difficulty, a task difficulty could always be easy. It could always be difficult, but it should remain the same for you. It's something that is permanent. So hopefully you now understand how attributions can cut across the success and failures with the stability dimension. Now we do find with attribution theory that there are some biases, especially if you are an actor or an observer. You're likely going to be one of those in any given context in any point in time. And so an attribution, again, is essentially a guess. 
And because it's a guess, it means that it's prone to bias. So the fundamental attribution error is a famous observer bias where you explain someone else's behavior or you explain away an event that you see through an internal attribution, which means you're blaming the cause of the event or the cause of the other person's behavior on an internal personality trait. An internal attribution, again, is within a person. So it is a personality trait or disposition. This is as opposed to saying, hey, maybe there was some kind of situation that caused the behavior. So you wouldn't do that with the fundamental attribution error. You would simply say your behavior is caused by a personality disposition. An actor observer bias would happen when we attribute the behaviors of others to individual traits, whereas our own behaviors to external causes. A famous version of this is likely seen with the self-serving bias, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Now, one of the other attributions that uh, we can make is really to help deal with things that could be random, such as crime or misfortune. This is known as the defensive attribution. And with a defensive attribution, we have a tendency to blame a victim for their misfortune. We do this so that we feel less likely to be victimized in the same or similar way. For example, if a friend is mugged and severely beaten, we may make a defensive attribution that suggests that maybe they deserved it. Maybe they did something that led to that. So what this ends up doing is often leading to undeserved uh, derogation of victims and sometimes even victim blaming. But this is often done, again, to protect the individual from the randomness of something such as crime. Now, with a self-serving bias, as I mentioned a moment ago, we typically favor our successes. When you're a successful person in life, you want to not just feel that success, but you want to claim that success and you want to own that success. So when you're being successful, you're likely to attribute that to personal factors. If I'm running my own clothing company and business is booming and I'm selling all kinds of clothes, I'm making all kinds of money, I'm likely to say, you know what, maybe I'm a pretty good salesperson. I'm a good business person. I'm doing well. However, if business is not booming, if bankruptcy is looming, if it appears to be uh, not so good, if I'm having business failures, now all of a sudden I'm putting the blame on situational factors. And so when you do that, what you're doing is utilizing the self-serving bias. When things are great, when you're successful, it's all you. When you're not being successful and instead you're experiencing failure, you're likely to put that on the environment or the situation. A famous example I would always give, when you take the AP exam, if you get a five on the exam once you find out your score, you want to own that success and you want to claim it all for yourself. So you would say, hey, I'm a really great test taker. It was all my studying. No one helped me. I'm a genius. But if you bomb the AP exam and you get a one, suddenly now you've got to confront the failure. And rather than confronting the failure, you might say, my AP Psych teacher was really bad, really terrible, in fact, and uh, did not prepare me. So as a result, it goes from being within the person to outside of the person. So you claim your successes, but you push your failures on the environment or other situational factors. Another area in social psychology attributed to attributions is called the just world phenomenon. The just world phenomenon is a very simple idea. It's basically a tendency that you believe the world is just and fair and people get what they deserve. You believe this so that you can explain away or rationalize away any kind of injustices, often, sadly, by blaming the victim. You might say that somebody got what they had coming to them because of the way that they were acting. If you believe that to be true, you are a supporter of what's called the just world phenomenon. You can take a look at the picture memes here as well to get a good idea of what's going on. And finally, in regards to attributional theory, we have a way of defining kind of the cultures around the world. Some cultures are defined by being highly individualistic or being filled with lots of individualism for their people. Other cultures are seen as much more collectivist. What is that actually saying? Well, individual cultures tend to have a lot of self-serving bias, meaning that people focus on themselves and they push away their failures onto the environment, excuse me, onto the environment or onto uh, others, anybody that's not themselves. 
individual cultures obviously have a lot more people who are focused on themselves. Collectivist societies tend to have more of a focus on the group. They deal with uh, being less prone to fundamental attribution errors, but they're also less prone to self-serving bias. Collectivist societies are typically seen uh, outside of the Western world. And so if you take a look at the, the graph here that ranks national cultures individualism, you can see that number one on the list is the United States. You may not find likely another culture that is more individualistic in their operation than the United States. The United States has a lot of people who really care about themselves in regard to the group. When you get to the bottom of this list, you see a lot more Asian and South American cultures, a lot more Asian and South American societies that um, do still care about the group and success of the group. And with that being said, uh, this concludes our topic. Next up, we will have conformity and obedience yielding to others as we break down some of psychology's most famous research studies. As always, peace out.